It has been a very long time since I've last uploaded a Warframe video and well after the new war release that was kind of it for me. I didn't really play the game anymore as there was nothing to do, there's no new content for quite a while and the new war didn't really change much but after the Angels of Zarimon, I gotta say it's a pretty decent update. Now, for those who want my opinion on New War, I'll make it brief and quick because there has been a ton of videos on New War already, so I don't see a point in me talking about it, but I'll just get my two cents right here. The quest was pretty decent, but the update as a whole was not that great. And the main reason for that is because New War didn't change Warframe at all. It was just a new quest that was four to five hours long, and that was it. There was nothing else. They didn't add any replayable content. The so-called origin system didn't change at all. In fact, the only new thing we even got was just Narmer bounties and a new frame and a couple weapons. That was literally it. There's nothing else to do until the Angels of Zarmon dropped. And for me personally, I just didn't see a reason to stick around anymore and talk about the same things over and over again when there's nothing to talk about. However, it wasn't all bad. There was a couple of good things that they added, like the Protovire armor and Cyandana and Ephemera. Now, these exclusive cosmetics were pretty good in a sense that you had to actually upgrade them to unlock their further evolutions. And we'll see this later down the line with the Angels of Zarmon update with their weapons, but I thought this is a really cool uh, feature that cosmetics can get upgrades which is something that a lot of people have been asking for for a while so instead of just buying a cosmetic and being done with it you can actually use the cosmetic and upgrade it to make it look even cooler and apart from that again there wasn't too much the update as a whole was just not that great but the quest itself was pretty decent i'm not gonna spoiler it um you can play it for yourself if you haven't already but yeah anyways moving on The Angels of Zarimont finally dropped and I'm going to be honest, it's a pretty good update. It's not as good as Deadlock Protocol, but on its own, I think Angels of Zarimont is what people have been kind of wanting for since New War. And even though it did take quite a while for it to release, I think it still is a pretty decent update. The Angels of Zarimon introduces a new quest line and it's extremely short, but it gets you right into the new content as soon as possible. This time, you are exploring the Zaramon ship, the same ship that went through the void jump, thus creating the Tenno we play as. This is the Tenno's origin ship and how they came to be. You encounter a group of survivors who need your help and you get introduced to a few missions. The Zaramon ship is not an open world, but just another location to unlock nodes on. And I got to say, the new tile set is absolutely stunning. It's easily the best tile set DE has designed. The lighting is on point. The details are incredible, the atmosphere is engaging, the new map is designed extremely well and it shows. It's also very easy to navigate and there aren't a lot of confusing platforms or corridors like the Kuku Fortress. This is by far the best aspect of this update and I'm so glad they put the effort into making the map the way it is. What's also really cool about the Zaramon ship is that all the little secrets you can unlock and explore in it. The map incentivizes players to go out of their way and explore every nook and cranny and break boxes and unlock secrets to discover. This actually goes pretty well with the new standing farm as Zarimon is not a typical do bounty over and over again. The game rewards standing for just exploring the map and finding these new medallions called void plumes. Now a lot of people did get upset when they found out that this entire standing farm is just syndicate medallions. But the map is so good and easy to navigate that I personally didn't mind it. And it's also the fact that you can run exterminates or actually any void mission here to farm every single void plume. As every single void plume drops on every single tile set. The bounties in this case are actually optional because they just give you an extra reward with more void quills. So you don't have to run bounties over and over again as you're going to get most of the resources you need by actually exploring the mission. And there's a lot of nuking frames out there so it's not very hard to break boxes and discover the void plumes very quickly. And the bounties themselves are not actually a bounty. It's just the same mission with an extra challenge that you have to complete. So really, you're just running the same missions over and over again to farm standing. And for me, in my opinion, this is by far the fastest 
standing farm that i have ever done you're not doing a bunch of bounties over and over again for like medical debt bonds and shit like that you're just exploring the map over and over again which gives you the guaranteed void plumes every single run and that kind of farm is pretty good now again i can see why people don't like it you have to farm syndicate medallions all over again and that in itself wasn't very popular already so I can see why people dislike the new farm but on the other hand it certainly is way faster now with the update also comes a bunch of new weapons new arcanes and uh, all the other good stuff and honestly we'll talk about the arcanes in another video but today i want to discuss the new incaron weapons and as of today there's actually two more new incaron weapons that cavalero sells which you can get now these weapons are probably some of the best designed weapons in the entire game not just visually but also functionally these weapons evolve from level one to five through evolution and to unlock these evolutions you got to complete challenges so already you have to actually use the gun in order to unlock its full potential you can't just slap five forma on it and call it a day and these evolution perks are honestly really good there's only a couple perks that are just downright bad and unusable but for the most part most perks are really good and they work well into your builds some perks change the build entirely and it's also really cool that the fact that these weapons allow you to further customize the build and make something a lot more unique than just your five form of setup is really good and i want to see more weapons have this new feature where instead of just slapping the five forma you actually have to evolve it and can choose from different perks that makes it for a much more engaging experience and the weapon feels a lot more rewarding to use versus a, a prime weapon that you got and just five formed it and all of the weapons are actually good they're not bad weapons obviously the Prados is probably the worst out of them all but the Prados is the worst out of them all meaning these three weapons are still really good Another cool thing this update also introduced is the Void Angel boss fights. And these Void Angel boss fights are also guaranteed on every single tile set, meaning you will always encounter one Void Angel. And the boss fights is pretty simple. It's just defeating its health and going into the void with your operator, taking out shields, and then just repeating that twice and killing it. But you also do get 15,000 focus, so it is a pretty decent side focus farm. And you're also guaranteed one Void Plume Pinion, which is the highest tier for Void Plumes. Now, Gaier is pretty good. Her farm obviously isn't the greatest and at release it was literally bugged so you could not obtain her until it actually patched the drop rates. But Geyer on her own is actually a pretty decent Warframe and she's much better than Caliban. Which I'm not even surprised at this point. I honestly think Caliban was just a joke character, I'll be honest. But Geyer on the other hand is actually a pretty good Warframe. Her passive is already extremely good Geyer's abilities gain a flat 10 percent critical chance increase per active electricity proc affecting the enemy to deal 2.0 times critical damage against that enemy and you can combine this with cathode grace which means you can get up to a maximum of 300 percent ability critical chance and that's pretty good because of this Geyer's abilities can reach orange and red crit multipliers to inflict three and four times ability critical damage which that is honestly really good but on the other hand it is electricity damage which isn't the greatest damage type against grenier but it still is decent as her abilities have a wide variety of use and good range and strength meaning she is a well-rounded character However, when it comes to higher level content like Steel Paths and Arbitrations, Geyer does suffer quite a bit. And it's a bit ironic how even though she has a pretty decent passive, a caster frame that cannot really scale well into later game content, which does hurt. But for regular content, she's completely fine. Now, this has to be the only downside to this entire update and that is void sling it's just bad it's straight up worse than void dash in every single way and it is the only negative aspect about this entire focus rework for some reason digital extremes thought to slow down void dash and add an animation to it that takes even longer rolling 
in your Warframe. The reason why a lot of people like the operator system after the many reworks in 2017 and 2018 is because Void Dash is fun. Void Dash allows you to be mobile with a character that has no mobility. Void Dash allows you to easily maneuver throughout tight tile sets very quickly and very efficiently. Void Dash allowed slower characters to catch up on missions, and Void Dash allowed people to speedrun missions a lot quicker than using traditional speed warframes like Goss and Volt. Void Sling is literally the worst thing I've seen in this game. And I'm not saying that unironically, it sucks. It's so bad, it's clunky, it's slow, it feels really sluggish. It's just unnecessary in a system that used to be super fast paced and fun. Void Dash was fun, Void Sling is not, and Void Sling makes the gameplay very frustrating. So what Void Sling is, is that your operator tethers to a location and then slings themselves afterwards after a short delay this may look visually cooler as void dash was literally just turning invisible and just dash into a location but void sling is just clunky because if an enemy gets in your way or an object gets in your way or you change directions through mid void sling you will get caught you will get stuck you'll get staggered you won't be at your desired tethered location it makes for a lot of frustration because you're using more void energy to get to your location versus void dash which you could have just literally dashed to that point and saved a lot of energy to a lot of people mobility is extremely important in warframe and one of the most painful things to see is de nerfing that mobility for no reason if void dash was still a thing nothing would have changed it just would have made the gameplay way more fun eidolons already are extremely easy and all this void sling change does is makes them a lot more frustrating than they should be and profit taker don't get me started on that fight if void sling is going to be a pain in the ass to use with that fight now in the latest update they did do some improvements to void sling so you can now dash in multiple directions with void sling without having to actually move your camera which is a good change but also remember that um you could do that with void dash it's the exact same thing now with the focus school being entirely reworked there's a bunch of new perks Zeneric is relatively the exact same, they just got a bunch of buffs, Madurai also got a ton of new changes and buffs, Unairu is now also the best for end game. being able to strip armor is really nice. Apart from Void Sling, there isn't that much else to talk about as most of the focus rework was pretty good, it's just Void Sling bringing it all down, which is really unfortunate as this was a central mechanic to the operators. And despite all the additions and changes they did to the focus and amps and arcanes, Still, Void Sling really hurt this update. But apart from that, that's pretty much it. Now, I'm not going to talk about the Eximus Reborn as that's going to be a completely separate video and an issue on its entirety. But this update did introduce a lot of new exciting things. New weapons, new arcanes, new mission types as well like Void Cascade which is extremely fun and very rewarding. And overall, I would say this update is pretty good. It's not amazing and it's not horrible. But it has a lot of new exciting things that got me back into Warframe and honestly that's great and I've been wanting to play again for a while but after New War there hasn't been too much to offer and I'm glad Zarimon actually offered something even if it wasn't amazing. Anyways that's gonna be it for me thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time peace.